Welcome back, Friendship High School. It is good to see you guys in the hallways. It's been a long time since spring break. We're excited to have the opportunity to open up and to start providing a learning experience here at Friendship High School. I'm Mr. Hernandez, I am your building principal, and I would like to take this opportunity also to introduce our assistant principals that will work with you throughout your career here at the high school. If you're a sophomore, if you're seniors, it'll be the last opportunity here to work with these fine individuals. We'll start off with Mr. Martinez. He's our assistant principals with last names A through C. I know our returning juniors and seniors have had an opportunity to work with these uh, principals. Mr. Sims, assistant principal, last names D through HE. Mr. Burr, assistant principal, last names HF through MC. Mr. Thompson, assistant principals, MD through R. And finally, Mrs. Reese, assistant principal, last names S through Z. They will be working in conjunction with your counselors who've had an opportunity also to work with your schedules at this time. Last, uh, Mrs. King, last names A through C. Mrs. Schulte, D through HE. New to the staff is Mrs. Conchola, last names HF through MC. Some of you may remember her from the elementary years. Mrs. Morrison, she'll be our lead counselor now, last names MD through R. And finally, we have Mr. Thompson, who will work with Mrs. Reese, last names S through Z. Just some information for you to have. Um, those of you that have requested your schedule changes, those requests need to come in at least by August the 21st. You can do that through your QR codes. The request needs to be done by Friday, by the end of the school day. However, those changes may take a few days afterwards to, to take place. So please follow those blue day uh, schedules that you have until you get called in for your new schedule. Some of you have already experienced this. The morning arrival, parent drop off will be in the main and south entrances there, door number one and door number seven. Our uh, tutorials, our cafeteria or the library are places that you can hang out as well as our student center. Well, I want to remind everybody because of COVID and some of the things that we're dealing with, please don't, do not congregate in the entry or the uh, foyer. And if you need to get to a class to get some extra work, we will be here available from you, for you Tuesday through Friday, beginning at 815. First period, Tuesday, <clears throat> excuse me, Tuesday through Friday will begin um, at 9 a.m. And the back gate closes and locks at, at 9 a.m. as well. Beginning next Monday, we'll start late start Monday, which is August the 26th. Uh, I think sophomores, I think you may kind of be familiar, or fresh, yeah, sophomores, you may be familiar with this. Uh, I know we did it at the ninth grade center as well, but those of you that are new to the campus, we will not start school till 9.20 a.m. And that includes blue days and gold days that fall on a Monday. Buses will run on a normal schedule. And students who arrive early may be asked to go to the cafeteria library or the student center. Because of all of this, late start Mondays, there they are, there's no tutorials on Monday. What is mandatory tutorials? Any teacher, because our official start time is 8.15, Tuesday through Friday, they can assign you to mandatory tutorials. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, we do have times after school that if you make arrangements with your teacher, you can be here till 5.30. We will run a, a light bus if you need to get, if you normally ride the bus. You will need to get a pass from your teacher though, if you need to get on that light bus. Now, just because they have the ability to assign you to mandatory tutorials, if you fail to show up, it can result in EDS. Students without. I've already noticed this. Any student with an out needs to leave the campus or study in the library. Please do not go walking through the hallways. That is not an option. You can visit other classrooms, but you have to have teacher permission. Therefore, you, you need to have a pass in order to go to that teacher's classroom. She, she or he may have a conference that they may want you to come in at the end of the day. All students must enter through the main or south offices when you come into the building at the beginning of the day and you guys have been doing a great job with that. Attendance, truancy charges will be filed after 10 unexcused absences within a six month period. So it's really important that your parents, if you're not feeling well or if you're gonna be out of town, that they call the school. Again, we don't wanna to accumulate too many of these because once we have excessive absences, 
Four, ab four absences, for example, four absences excused or unexcused in a class for a semester, you may lose your credit. Even though you may have a passing grade, you may lose your credits because of this. So please be here at school. All absences with the exception of school-sponsored events and, and excuse absences with a doctor's note, they do count against you because of due to, on your semester exams. Students who are tardy, uh, and, and you can go through the south office or the main office to get a Raptor pass, this is how you're going to get into class if you come in after 9 a.m. Mrs. Shelley Richardson, she will be our only, it's Mrs. Richardson that is the one attendance clerk that we have. Tardy policies, We're, we will start tardies on Friday. I need everybody to be aware of that, that tardies, we will start counting them on Friday. You have six minutes between classes, there's plenty of time to get from point A to point B. So, first to third tardies, they're documented warnings. Nothing happens to you other than the fact that we've documented it. it your fourth, fifth, and sixth tardies, you get a 35-minute D-Hall, and if you miss D-Hall, that's one day of ISS. Your seventh through your ninth tardy, it's one day of ISS. For your seventh, eighth, and ninth tardy, you will each receive one day of ISS for all of those. Your 10th and 11th result in two days of ISS, so a total of four days in ISS could happen if you're uh, tardy your 10th and 11th one. Your 12th tardy results in six days of pride, and your 13th tardy results in 30 days of the AEP. Again, this is the total tardies. It's not by your class period, so we do keep up with those, and the tardy policy does start over at semester. Dress code, and I've been needing to address this, and there's a few of us out of compliance right now. Overall, we're doing a great job, really, but some of the things that, uh, that I am seeing, short skirts must be fingertip length um, all the way around. Uh, when you wear leggings, we want to make sure, sure that we wear a shirt long enough that it covers our back ends. Tops without a standard armhole are prohibited. That's those tank tops. Those of you that you know what I'm talking about, any top shown bare midriffs, and we've had a few of those ladies, uh, those are prohibited. So please make sure that if you're going to wear a shirt that's kind of short, please put a t-shirt or something underneath it, another blouse. That would work great. Any clothing depicting inappropriate pictures, gestures, or symbols are not allowed. We've not really had a big problem with that one, so please keep up the great work. Holes, uh, again, on, in your jeans, uh, I know we're pretty lenient on those things, but honestly, uh, any hole that is, you know, comes above the fingertips, we're going to ask you to probably change. Um, Again, we need to keep those to a minimum. As far as uh, except as required by law, hats, caps, sunglasses, or head coverings, including bandanas, will not be worn. We will be asking you to remove those. Again, uh, even with the uh, when you wear your cap and you wear your mask, it is very hard to identify who you are. So please keep your hats off. Male students, I know some of you are trying to get away with. Uh, not shaving because you're wearing your mask. Uh, if we notice it, if you take off your mask and we notice you need to shave, we're gonna ask you to shave that day. Any facial or body piercing, I know there's been some of us walking around with uh, piercings in our nose, rings, those need to be removed, please. Males, you're not allowed to wear earrings either. Hair code, boys, that may not extend below the collar of the shirt. Those of you that are trying to wear out, wear your hair long, uh, need to pin it up, not in a ponytail, but in a bun. Uh, so if you want to keep the length of your hair, I'm, I'm fine with it, but you got to keep it pinned up. Otherwise, we need to get a haircut. For all students, all hair colors shall be a natural hair color. Extreme hairstyles, including shave designs, are not allowed. Hair needs to be in compliance by Monday, August 26th. Otherwise, we will be making parent phone calls. I will do a call out as well, reminding your parents on Friday after school as to what some of these um, measures are that we're taking. All dress and hair code policies can be found in the student handbook located on, with the uh, online student services. Guys, you got to remember, you're the ones, your parents are the ones that sign these, um, these policies. 
As far as the dress code referral is concerned, you're going to be referred to your principal. Your teacher will also call if, if something is happening in the classroom, our principals are going to ask the teacher to call your parents and we will call as well once you receive that referral and you come into the office. If you're able to correct the infraction, as far as the dress code is concerned, we're going to return you back to class with a tardy. However, if it's something you're not able to correct, uh, we're, we're, we're probably going to have to go to ISS with a discipline referral. That's the last thing we want to do. You need to be in class for instruction. Cell phones. Cell phones may be used from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. during passing periods, during lunch, and for instructional purposes as, as long as your teacher allows it. Um, Teachers, I would ask also if students are going to the restrooms that you collect those phones, keep them on your desk, and then they can pick them up when they come back from the restroom. During instructional time, so if you get a pass to go to the restroom or, or go to another class to drop something off, there's to be no phones in the hallway during instructional time. During passing periods, we have no problems with it. But during instructional time, as that class is taking place, no phones in the hallways, please. And when you're listening to your uh, phone with your earbuds, that's still using your phone during instructional time, so please put it up. There will be a $15 administrative fee beginning with the second offense. The first time is a free one if it gets turned into your principal. The second time, you will get a $15 administrative fee. Any student in the hall during classes will need a pass. If your teacher doesn't give you one, please ask for one. Uh, we want to make sure that you are where you're supposed to be. Your nurse's office, the nurse's office uh, needs a pass from your teacher. There's a specific pass we use for our nurses, so please make sure that uh, you get one from your teacher. Some common infractions that we have regarding discipline, uh, some of them are, include fighting. It's a three-day ISS plus a six-day pride. Uh, that used to be a 30-day DAEP placement years ago. We have changed that. So if you do get caught into an altercation with another student, if it's mutual combat, it will be three days ISS plus a six day pride. Misdemeanor assault, 30 days DAEP. Understand that driving to school is a privilege, it's not a right. So if you're speeding through our parking lots, reckless driving, that can be revoked. Parking on campus, a lot of you have already experienced this. You can park on campus, but we have $30 for our blue lots, which most of you have already paid and then $20 for the gold lots. The gold lots include the stadium parking lot, back behind the Tiger Pit, and over to the west of the pack. Parking your space. If you're parking in the blue spot, if, you're, if you are not parking in your space, you will get a boot on there after you've already received a warning, and that's a $40 removal. So please make sure that if you're parking in the blue, that you're parking in your appropriate spot. Tobacco, drugs, and alcohol. Yes, it happens. Possession of use of tobacco, that is three days ISS. Something that all of us are familiar with by now, and it started last year, and that is the use of vaping devices on campus. Over to the stadium at football games, that is on campus. That is a 30-day DAEP placement. Possession or use or under the influence of alcohol, that too is a 30-day DAEP placement. However, however, if you're in possession or use or under the influence of drugs, and this includes your synthetic marijuanas, that's a 45-day DAEP placement. Also, drug paraphernalia is, well, you, you can have the drug paraphernalia, not the drugs, that too is a 45 DAEP placement. We've really gotten better with this. Guys, we need to keep that to a minimum. If anything, if you're doing those things, I would advise against it. But if you're doing it, I'd strongly suggest that you keep it at home. We do run the dogs through the parking lots, and they will pick up on it. Bully and hazing, engaging in written verbal expression through electronic means or physical conduct. Guys, that is considered bullying. Students must not participate either individually or in a group in bullying, taunting behaviors toward another student. Such behaviors may include repeated teasing, ridicule, name-calling threats, theft, gossip, and rumors, or physical intimidation of any kind. Guys, this can lead up to 30 days of DAEP. Not, it's not could, it will lead up to 30 days of DAEP. So if you're doing it, cut it out. 
Cyberbullying is when someone is tormented, threatened, harassed, humiliated, embarrassed, or otherwise targeted by another person using internet, interactive, and digital technologies or mobile phones. Guys, that is a fingerprint. It doesn't go away. A lot of you think, hey, I, I've deleted it off my phone. Guess what? The other person that you're doing it to is saving it. So I would highly recommend don't do it. That will lead to a 30-day DAEP placement. Understand when we go out of town, you are on a school-sponsored activity, even if you're going as a spectator. So if you're going to watch a football game and we're present, that too, you're on a school-sponsored activity. Even though you're not participating, you're participating as a student from this school. Again, you'll need to adhere to the student code of conduct uh, as if you were with the school. Behaviors and expectations. First of all, assemblies. We always want to give our guests your undivided attention. And in the hallways, refrain from running, uh, being overly loud and congregating. Guys, we want to make sure due to um, what we're dealing with regarding COVID that we don't congregate. Just get from point A to point B. You can walk and talk at the same time, and you guys have been doing a great job. So please do not congregate in the hallways. As far as our games, uh, no derogatory comments to opposing fans, uh, teams, or referees. The whole purpose for us to uh, go to the ball games is cheer for us and not against the opposing team. Uh, we, need to, we need to be very positive in what we do when we're at games. Obviously, cussing is not allowed and it's inappropriate, and please refrain from doing it. Do not open the doors. Um, as far as our doorways, it's too risky for the safety of you and the others. Don't prop them open. Uh, use the door number one and door number seven. That is the main entrance and the south entrance. Again, if you're propping those doors, guys, we got cameras at every one of those entrances. So if you're propping them open, we're going to know who you are. So please do not do that. As far as the parking lot fence procedures, those, those gates are going to lock at 9, a, at 9 a.m. And so, guys, once they lock, and if you're not in that area by 9 a.m., you're going to have to walk all the way around, and you certainly are tardy at that time. So make sure you're inside that gated area before 9 a.m. We're doing a good job with the cafeteria. You please remain seated. And obviously, we have to remove our mask. Uh, as we're eating, but once you're done eating guys put that thing back on and let's make sure we keep everybody safe uh, Hallways During lunch that needs to remain clear, please I know that some of us are going down to the student center others are going to the cafeteria But once you get there, please stay there until the bell rings Classes are still going on and so we want to make sure that we don't interrupt those teachers as they're teaching their B lunch or, or their, uh, their classes during your A lunch if that's what you ha have. You want to make sure that you bust your own tables every day. You guys have done a great job with this. Throw your own trash away. Only your guardian may bring you lunch. Lunches should be dropped off in the south office and we have a place for your parents to sign. Put a note on your lunch and you can come by and pick it up. That's going to be right there in the vestibule area in the south end. Please remind your parents, do not drop it off in the main office, but do it in the south office. Leaving, for camp, leaving campus for lunch, um, you need to make sure that you have that sign note by your parent every day in the office before second period begins. You can do this, your second and your sixth period, uh, drop it off. If you get caught leaving without a signed note from Raptor or a, a Raptor pass, you will be assigned one day of ISS for each offense. So just do it right. You're allowed to leave, but just bring a note. Office 365. Uh, we're going to ask you, and, and it's a requirement, that we use our school emails to communicate with teachers. If for some reason we have to go into a mini closure, this is how your teachers are going to communicate with you. So again, we're going to use Camden Reese. This is the son of Mrs. Reese, one of our assistant principals. He is going to use camden.reese88 at friendship.net. Those of you know your, uh, if you hadn't got it already, please go down to the uh, Media Center Library and they will help you out with that. But we'll need to use our network username as well as our password. This is going to be really important. 
again because this is how our teachers are going to communicate with you please don't ask them hey can you use my personal email the answer is no we're going to use our school emails please this is a lot easier for everyone to use and if you need your password reset go down to the library and they will help you out with that guys I know that's really quick uh, and, I, and I wanted to do that as quickly as I could do it because I know your teachers are ready to start teaching again but we want to go over those expectations we normally go into the pack but due to uh, gathering of large crowds we were not able to do that so this was the best way we could find to communicate with you I want to wish every one of you the best of luck in this 2020 2021 school year seniors I'm really expecting a great year out of you and we're off to a great start. I hope we can finish the rest of the school year the same way. It's great to see you back. And one last thing, go Tigers.